My name is Sadina Ponsivan. I'm an artist here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I create work from small drawings to big, large public murals. So growing up, I've always been a part of the like any counterculture, whether it was skateboarding or hip hop or graffiti or anything like that. Um, and those were things that I wanted to embrace. So when I was a, a real, real youngin, I'd go out on the streets just because I wanted to be a part of that counterculture. It's, for me, it was about rebellion. It was about doing things that I wasn't supposed to do. Atlanta at that time was, was having a boom in graffiti and I, I wanted to be a part of that. There were artists who were like Sever, hence, like all these guys, Totem, um, who were basically blanketed city and I loved how, were they, how they were using art as a way to make a mark on the city, literally. We're in the Croc Street Tunnel at the moment, and one of the beautiful things about it is that anyone can come in here with spray paint. They have to have any sort of creative inkling, they can come in here and basically just go into town. So bike, pe bike people come through all the time. Um, a lot of times, Croc Street Tunnel is where people cut their teeth. So they'll come in here, if they've never done any spray paint, spray painting, they'll come in here and they'll just basically learn their chops here. For me, it was just wanting to be a part of something versus actually owning and being a part of it. Um, so for me, the transition became where it was, it was me wanting to inject more of the fine art background that I had into what I was doing. And so it became more about um, public art, street art. Street art versus graffiti are two different, very, are the very different things. Um, and I started leaning more towards the street art because it reflected more of my background. Uh, my creative practice involves having basically three different avenues. One is public work, uh, the second is gallery work, so showing paintings and drawings, uh, and the third is sort of in the creative sphere of branding, design, uh, digital products and things of that nature. For me, installation work is really about, really, really about utilizing the environment as much as possible, so, you know, expounding upon what's there in the space and then working within it to to make sure that it's all harmonious. In a gallery it's more about just taking a piece of work and putting it in front of the viewers so that they are more um, they're having a conversation with the piece versus being immersed within an experience. Uh, so today I am working on a mural that will be a part of Forward Warrior and Forward Warrior is an organization here that basically helps to beautify the city of or the neighborhood of Cabbage Town. For Ford Warrior, it's, it's a really long stretch of walls here, and the basic way that it goes is you, you pick a space and you paint it, and then each year the, the walls get covered by new artists. Uh, and for me, I've, been, I've had the pleasure and the honor of coming back multiple years, and I've sort of gravitated to one spot on the wall, and I've been painting there maybe the past five years now. But when I approach creating new work, it's I usually have an idea in mind, whether it's just a thought or um, a theory, or even it's just a small, simple idea, and I want to explore it. It's Art for me is this way for me to process and, and develop an idea. So it's having an idea in mind or having a technique in mind that I want to explore. So it's all about exploration for me. So I'll probably, the, the process is I'll put the roller on the pole, and then open the can, pour it in, then I'll start buffing everything, and then I'll wait a moment for it to dry, and then I'll go in with a sketch, a paper spray paint to sketch everything out. Everything is transitory, um, and that's something that's been beautiful for me about public art, is that I know that it's only there for a moment, and you can enjoy it while it's there, but eventually it gets covered, or it gets eroded by, you know, the elements and time and things like that. For a very good bulk of my career has been about questioning who we are and why we're here and just purpose in general. And I think that's that's probably a question that most people have is just, you know, why are we here? And so for me, it's trying to pull in threads of nature, of environment, of relationships with other people and our relationships with just the universe. Um, and then just trying to make it a little more accessible. Um, I don't know if it's always apparent or uh, successful, but those are the main themes for me, is just making sure that I try to understand who I am, why I'm here, uh, and then the, sort of the legacy that, that goes beyond me and, and everyone else. So today mine is just gonna be about the Latin phrase amor fati, which is 
which translates to loving your fate. Uh, and for me, it's about embracing everything that's good, everything that's bad because it's necessary, uh, and just reacting to that and moving on. Whenever I'm sketching out the, the underline, underdrawing and I'm against the wall, it's a little difficult for me to figure out what the proportions are, so I'll have to put down just initial blocks and then I have to step back to make sure that everything is, is sort of where I want it. Now that I've stepped back, I see, I see that the eyes are off, the nose is definitely off. I try to move the, the lips down a little bit more, so that gives me a sense of where the lips should be. So now that I've taken uh, that first pass with a, a really light color, I'm going to go over it with a slightly darker color, just so that I could start refining and, and figuring out the form and proportions of everything. So we'll go through and put this chin down because that's going to be my reference point. And then from there we'll go into the mouth. There's lots of pushing, putting paint down and then stepping back and just a, a continuous little dance. Yeah, looking at it now, I really like this interplay of the, the lines that are going on here. So I think I may actually end up changing the design to incorporate what's what I'm seeing. One of my favorite things about painting at least outside on, with Ford Warrior is that it's all experiment, experimentation and sometimes I liken it to jazz so you put something down and then you just sort of flow with it and I think that's what's happening with this piece. I had a concept in mind but I think I'm going to abandon it and then just sort of play off with what we've got here. The sketch is it's still just an impression of what I wanted originally but I love the liveliness of what's going on here just there's a lot of movement and a lot of just quick mark making and that's not what's going on here there's a little bit of there's a hint of it here but i think i want to inco incorporate way more of that that gestural style it's only been in the past maybe five or six years for me where i've really appreciated abstract art for, for, for me everything was very figurative very representational very realistic i was more drawn to the skill of it when i started really appreciating abstract art it was because I discovered an artist um, who, who was Cy Twombly. Uh, and I read this interview with him where he was talking about how every brush stroke on uh, an abstract piece is basically just an artifact of history. So like each layer, each mark is something that was put down by the artist. So it's almost like um, a tangible excavation of, of the artist's movement. Um, and so that's stuck with me over the years. And I've been trying to incorporate that more into my, my practice where you're able to see the brush strokes, where you're able to see texture. Because then again, it's, it's that literally making a mark on the universe and you're showing that you've existed. Thanks for watching. Visit us at AIBTV.com. Follow us at Watch AIBTV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And subscribe to AIB Studios on YouTube.